Hello, I am Hammurabi, the ancient king of Babylon, and my journey was marked by remarkable achievements and an unwavering pursuit of justice. Through my leadership, I built an empire that lasted for generations. But it wasn't just the expansion of land and wealth that filled me with pride. It was the creation of the world's first code of laws that truly brought light to my existence. Every word was written with care, with the accumulated wisdom of previous generations and with the intention of promoting equality, justice, and fairness. Each law that was inscribed on stone tablets had the purpose of protecting the weak and oppressed, ensuring that the rich and powerful did not abuse their power. And though centuries have passed since my reign came to an end, the legacy of my code of laws still shines like a star in the sky. The justice that I tirelessly sought endures and inspires generations. It is with deep emotion that I remember the days when I reigned, and the hopes and dreams that I shared with my people. Come with me on this exciting journey. Watch the video until the end and discover more about my incredible story. In the early 18th century BC, the city-states of ancient Mesopotamia once again fragmented after the Akkadian Empire disintegrated at the hands of the nomadic Gudian people from the Zagros Mountains. But a small kingdom called Babylon rose to great prominence under the leadership of a shrewd Amorite king named Hammurabi. A fearsome ruler and military commander, Hammurabi conquered all of Mesopotamia, with Babylon serving as the heart of his powerful new empire. Since its formation six centuries earlier, Babylon had no official ruler until Hammurabi's father, Sinuballat, declared himself king in 1812 BC. During his reign, Sinuballat achieved modest expansion of Babylon's territory by conquering the city-states of Kish, Sippar, and Borsippa laying the groundwork for his son and heir Hammurabi to effectively give birth to an empire. When his father fell ill and abdicated in 1792 BC, Hammurabi ascended to the throne at the age of 18. During the early years of his reign, Hammurabi focused on greatly improving Babylon's infrastructure, overseeing the completion of his father's public projects and initiating many of his own. He raised the city walls for greater protection against enemies and added many new temples dedicated to Marduk, the Babylonian god of storms. Hammurabi issued a proclamation forgiving all debt that people owed to the kingdom, making him extremely popular among his subjects. The first decade of his reign was relatively peaceful until the powerful kingdom of Elam invaded the Mesopotamian plain. Elam first conquered the city-state of Ashnana and then set its sights on Babylon. In an attempt to consolidate power, Elam tried to provoke a war between the kingdom of Larsa and Babylon. Having discovered Elam's plan, Hammurabi and Larsa's king Rimsin formed an alliance to keep foreign invaders at bay. Together, they managed to repel the Elamite forces, but the limited number of soldiers that Rimsin committed to the effort enraged Hammurabi. In retaliation, Hammurabi persuaded several neighboring city-states and kingdoms to march on Larsa. Their combined forces besieged the city for six months, eventually leading to its fall. Rimsin managed to escape but was captured and executed shortly thereafter. Hammurabi, realizing he was becoming much more powerful than his southern allies, decided to betray them and take their lands to further expand his own empire. After devastating his former allies, Hammurabi had complete control of southern Mesopotamia. He managed to accomplish this great feat in coordination with the help of Mari. Although Babylon had already expanded far beyond his father's wildest dreams, Hammurabi's thirst for power only intensified over time. Mari's decision to send troops to aid Hammurabi in his conquest of southern Mesopotamia caused great unrest within the kingdom. Hammurabi took advantage of this situation by betraying Mari and marching north towards the weakened kingdom. He managed to annihilate Mari's capital and proceeded to execute its king. As a gesture of mercy, he allowed Mari and its northern cities to persist as small villages under his rule. Hammurabi's next plan was to invade the independent kingdom of Assyria located to the north. The legendary king Shamshiadad had recently died of old age, causing discontent throughout the kingdom and allowing Hammurabi to quickly conquer Assyrian cities. 
This final conquest solidified his control over all of Mesopotamia, but his rule over the vast empire was short-lived as a severe illness led to his death at age 60 in 1750 BC. Hammurabi's trademark military tactic was to build temporary dams on the rivers of an enemy city to starve its population or drown them by releasing the water to create an unrelenting flood. This ruthless maneuver proved to be a key factor behind the rapid expansion of his empire. Hammurabi's most celebrated accomplishment was the implementation of a code of 282 laws, known as the Code of Hammurabi. The laws were a compilation of revised Sumerian and Akkadian law codes. The Code of Hammurabi was inscribed in the Akkadian language using cuneiform writing carved into a seven-foot steel made of black diorite. The top of the steel shows Hammurabi standing and receiving the laws from Shamash, the Babylonian god of justice. The code attempted to achieve equality through laws such as, if a man destroys another man's eye, they shall destroy his eye, and if a man breaks another man's bone, his bone shall be broken. However, it fell far short of modern standards of equality due to its categorization of people into three distinct classes, property owners, free men, and slaves. Some examples of this injustice include, if someone steals cattle or sheep, or a donkey, or a pig or a goat, if it belongs to a god or to the court, the thief shall pay thirtyfold, if it belongs to a free man of the king he shall pay tenfold, if the thief has nothing with which to pay he shall be put to death. And if a male slave says to his master, you are not my master, his master shall prove that he is his slave and cut off his ear. Some laws were particularly harsh on women and required only accusations to be applied, such as, if a man's wife has her finger pointed at her on account of another, but she has not been caught lying with him, for her husband's sake she shall plunge into the sacred river. The Code of Hammurabi influenced several subsequent law codes, most notably those found in the Book of the Covenant of the Hebrew Bible. The Babylonian Empire was short-lived due to Hammurabi's inability or perhaps disinterest in establishing a strong bureaucratic system. His successors failed to sustain the vast empire and it progressively disintegrated over the next century until its complete collapse during the 16th century BC. Through relentless determination, Hammurabi built a vast empire and successfully implemented one of the world's first systems of laws. So, what did you think of the story of Hammurabi and his empire? Leave your comments below and don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe now so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you for watching.